Hi everyone, welcome back to Art Impressions Watercolor Wednesday. This is Kendra Krebs, guest artist this week, bringing you a really fun watercolor Christmas card. And this is a super cute pop-up card using the Art Impressions dies. And I'm gonna show you all the products we're using today. So the first one is the watercolor mini flower set, and I'm gonna use this little guy and then the little dots here. I'm also gonna use this little foliage from watercolor foliage set to new. And then the dies I am incorporating into my project are the Art Impressions Steel Die Circle Double Stitch for the little uh, inside of the wreath. And then I'm also using the rectangle double stitched um, for the uh, outside uh, rectangle and then it has like a little stitch here which is just so cute. I mean it's nice to just add a little bit of extra flair uh, to the outside of these dies. So I'm going to be incorporating those today as well as the Bible journaling block letters die set. And you can see my little J-O-Y is kind of out because I went ahead and cut these out already just to kind of save us some time and get going. So this is on watercolor paper and I just ran these through my die cut machine as well as the little backside here. So this is going to be kind of laying like this on top of the other, just like we had in the sample card right here. So you can see this is the double layer and um, I'm gonna show you how to make this right now. So we're gonna start with this one and as you can see, I have already previously cut these out. Um, this is a cutout like any other die cut. Uh, you just take your die, uh, washi tape it onto your watercolor paper, run it through, and then you've got this. So I'm gonna take that little foliage stamp and number 177, and I'm just going to ink the top of this. I don't need the stem right now. So I'm just going to put a couple of these little foliage greenery stamps kind of around the letters here. This is just going to add a little extra touch to the outside of the letters, almost like the inside is kind of crawling out through the holes. And then we'll put a couple up in here as well as down in here maybe some here as well okay and then I'm gonna take my little polka dot the little dots stamp with 885 and I'm gonna ink that and start stamping these and now when you're stamping with these really teeny tiny ones just put them right in the corner of your acrylic block because it just helps with more control when you're stamping these tiny ones it's really hard to kind of know where they're going but if you place them in the corner you can use that corner as a guide to kind of help you decide where you want to stamp these and really it doesn't matter where it's stamped but it is nice to have a little bit more control sometimes so i'm just gonna put a few of these in here and it doesn't really matter where like i said just wherever you feel you want some color and then i'm going to take that little leaf um in the mini foliage or flower set as well and just put a few of these out here. Now this is the darker red, this is 837. And I am just inking and stamping this around as well. And this is a really simple card. You know, this is, this is something you can make in an assembly line for your Christmas cards. I know a lot of people are kind of looking for something that looks really nice, but that they can do quickly. And this is one of those cards that you can do really quickly and it looks so good. So now we're gonna take our brush and a little bit of water, and I'm just going to begin to dab. Now this is what we do, what we taught, what we always teach, dab, 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 and just move that color around. Now I'm going to pull this color out a little bit further than the actual stamp to get a really nice haze sort of around the letters 
just so they're not plain. If you like the plain, absolutely leave them. But it is kind of nice to, to add a little bit of extra color just around here. And I'm gonna come and bring, no need to use your palette unless you want a lot of extra color. You can just kind of use the color that's on the stamped image that you already have on your paper because it's watercolor or water-based markers, that color moves. And you can just take that and transfer it onto another area of the card. And I'm just going to continue to add water here. So I've done all my green now, and I'm gonna come in and just add a little bit of water to the red areas. So these could be berries, they could be little winter flowers. And then I'm gonna to add to the darker red and that darker red just really helps the brighter red pop and it also gives it dimension. Okay, a couple more. All right, so this part is pretty much finished. We're gonna let that dry. I'm just gonna set it aside. And then we're going to pull in the underneath card. So this is the one that kind of sits underneath and it's what we are going to put the um, foliage and flowers underneath on so that when we set this up, we'll be able to see through here down onto this paper. So what's really important is that we make sure that we're actually stamping in the area that we need. So we'll take this paper again, and then we will just draw with a very light touch of a pencil, just kind of a round, about you know just very it doesn't need to be perfect but we just need to kind of know whether letters are going uh, you won't even be able to see these um, pencil marks when they're finished but we just need a guide to sort of know where we want to stamp underneath this to make sure that the image is uh, placed correctly so i'm going to take my number 249 and i'm just going to stamp this little foliage branch all over underneath here. And if you have ink on your fingers like me, just be careful when you're touching your paper because you can easily transfer um, excess ink and color onto these really nice um, clean lines. So just, just kind of be aware of where your fingers are. Um, that is something I have done many, many times. So it's not the end of the world. We, you know, there are ways you can kind of cover it up or um, kind of wash it out with the water. But it's better to just, you know, be aware and not have that issue in the first place. Okay, so I'm just sort of arbitrarily stamping these around. There's no perfect way to do this. I just want to make sure I have enough uh, branches, greens, um, in here so that when I go to stamp my flowers, I've got those flowers really nice and sandwiched in. So I'm just kind of moving this around and stamping one, two, three, four, five, um, almost every time. It doesn't have to be every single time, especially because I have the lighter uh, little branches in here already. And that is to create dimension in my work. So I want to stamp off until I have plenty of light areas. And then if I want to go back in and put some darker areas, I can. Now I'm going to switch back to the 177 just to get some differentiation in the green. I really like when these cool and warm tones um, mix. It's really pretty. Adds a lot of depth. And I'm not going to put nearly as many of this color in. I just want some just to help it to feel uh, more multi-dimensional. Okay, so it looks like I'm getting a really nice um, amount of branches in here. Now I'm gonna go straight into my flowers and I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did on this, except in here. So I've stamped my green branches and now I'm gonna stamp in all of my little red flowers, kind of all over the place. I'm gonna add little bundles of these red dots just all around. 
And because I had those pencil marks in there, I know where to go. I know how far out to go. Um, if I went too far, I would be able to see past the lines of the top and we really don't want that. We want to we want to keep the color underneath here uh, to help with the illusion um, that it's kind of crawling out. The flowers and the foliage are crawling out of the space. Okay, so I'm going to continue kind of moving around. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, somewhere in there is fine. As long as you're getting dark to light, it doesn't have to be exactly five every single time. Just want to make sure you get mostly fives, fours in there so that you have some light and darkness. Okay, so now I've got a pretty good amount of the dots and now I'm going to go in with that darker red leafy flower. And I'm just going to begin to stamp these in. This is such a nice contrast with the bright red. I love these together, especially for the holidays. Just adds a richness. Just continue to color, and, and I'll kind of show this on camera how I'm coloring this. I'm just going, I'm using the side of the pen just to get the best distribution of ink onto the stamp. That is something I've learned over time. I used to ink it like this by holding it, and I just never got as good of a distribution as I do when I let the stamp rest on the counter and then color it on. Because I can use a little bit more pressure in my right hand with the pen and really push that ink into the rubber than I can if I'm holding it. Because otherwise, if I did, the, the stamp would fall out, right? Because I'm using that much pressure. So, but if it's resting on the table, then that's a non-issue. Okay, now I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna go color by color. So I'm gonna start with my greens and then I'm gonna go to my bright reds and then I'm gonna go to my dark red. And there is not a right or wrong way. This is just generally the, um, the order I go in. So I just kind of keep it that way. And I'm gonna to touch all my greens, just dab, dab, dab. Again, this does not need to be perfect. I'm just kind of moving my brush. And notice how I'm holding my paper because I don't have ink up here, but I am wiping the water off with my fingertips. So I know if I touch that, I'm gonna distribute ink onto my paper. So I'm gonna hold it with my palm and just, be able to kind of control where the, you know, the stability of the paper is that way. Because normally I would be holding it like this, but because my hands are wet, I don't want to um, get any ink on this paper because it has been pre-cut. So this is the size. I'm not gonna be cutting off any extra ink, um, ideally. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna continue to move this around. And I'm just dabbing. It doesn't need to be perfect again. I'm just kind of dabbing this around. You can see the lighter green coming out and or the warmer green with the cooler green. And it's just so pretty when you get that mixture. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of keep going. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of the red on accident. It's no big deal, just keep going. It's gonna mix anyway, so we might as well enjoy the mixture. Okay, now here's the brighter red coming out and just dabbing and moving on. Notice I'm leaving white space, right? We say that all the time, make sure to leave your white space. That is so important because if you don't, it's gonna be what? Flat, let's all say it together. It's going to be flat if you do not leave your white space. So definitely make sure that's on the forefront of your mind. I used to leave a note to myself, white space <laughs> on a sticky note, because I always wanted to color everything in. And that actually helped me, surprisingly. I just kind of kept it on the forefront of my mind that I needed to leave white space. Okay, so now I have plenty of white space in here, right? And I'm just going to check and make sure that my image underneath is 
going to come through to the other side and it does. So now I'm gonna let this dry, just kind of set this aside and I'm gonna flip this over and go and make sure, make sure my uh, <laughs> workspace is dry. And I'm just gonna take some little pop-up. Um, I'm not sure who makes these ones, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure who makes these, but they're a little pop-up. Yeah, if I can get one off. These are just little pop-up rounds. And I'm going to put them on the corners of my paper. And then we can pull the plastic off. The joys of nails, right ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> okay, so I got that one, yay! Small victories. And we're gonna pull this one off. <laughs> Bear with me, everyone. Okay, there it is. Okay, we've got two more. We're halfway there. These ones are, these are so fun. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be, uh, oh, there we go. One more. Good thing these don't need to look pretty underneath because they look a little rough. Okay, there it goes. All right, so now we've got our top and we can place this onto the bottom piece and just line it up like so. That look pretty good. Okay, I'm a little off screen there. So I'm just going to push these down just a little bit Make sure I'm not getting any ink on there. And then I also am using the uh, circle die set. And I'm going to put another little sticky onto the little circle die that I cut out. Now this is the tiniest one. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take that little plastic piece off. There it goes. Okay. Take that off, and I'm just going to stick that right in the center, like that. So you're all creative. I don't need to go through the rest of the process on how to mount this to the back. And you know, this is just a little wire uh, ribbon that we um, glued on here. Um, but but the main piece right here is this beauty. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. If you um, want to follow us on Instagram, we would love that. Comment below. Tell me what you liked about it. Maybe your next Christmas idea. Um, maybe comment and tell us what you want to see. I'm on for next week as well, so you'll see me there. Um, check out Bonnie Krebs Bible Journaling on Instagram. And we will see you next week. Bye, everyone.